thank you for introducing me and good morning everybody so um, my topic today is the univentricular heart as you know this broad category of congenital heart malformation is very challenging malformation in terms of uh, description and classification and the management so there has been so many debates on the definition of a single ventricle or univentricular heart. So as you know, according to Van Pra, single ventricle or common ventricle is one ventricular chamber that receives the both tricuspid and mitral valve or a common atrial ventricular valve. By this definition, as you know, the mitral atresia or triscus atresia was not included. But Anderson emphasized, as you know, the atrioventricular junction. So the univentricular heart or univentricular AV connection is the entire atrioventricular junction is connected to only one chamber in the ventricular mass. However, these terms implies that just uh, like a solitary ventricle, but actually hearts with just a solitary ventricle is very rare. Most hearts has two ventricles, one dominant well-developed ventricle and uh, the other very hyperplastic, in incomplete or rudimentary ventricle actually. So the these terms, the use of these terms may be criticized. So, functionally single ventricle or functional univentricular heart has been proposed. So, these terms means that hearts in which one chamber within the ventricular mass is incapable of independently supporting either pulmonary or system circulation for whatever reason. This term means that the entire ventricular mass is univentricular. You mean so? Nowadays, this functional single ventricle or functional univentricular heart, this is the synonym, is uh, used uh, widespread. So, broadly, functional univentricular hearts include hypoplastic left heart syndrome or some kind of pulmonary atresia intact ventricular septum, some forms of DORV, crisscross heart, some subset of Epstein anomaly or CCTJ, etc. So, but previously reported in 2000, the congenital heart surgery nomenclature and database project classified single ventricle as following, double inlet ventricle including double in the left ventricle or double in the right ventricle. And another is absent one AV valve, including mitral or tricuspid atresia and unbalanced AV corneal defect, heterotaxia syndrome, and others. But another classification proposed by Wilkins and Anderson Functionally, as you know, functionally single ventricle includes univentricular AV connection. One category is univentricular AV connection, including double in the ventricle, absent AV connection. The another category is biventricular AV connection with hypoplasia of one ventricle. Uh, this is different from this classification because this category includes hypoplasia left heart the syndrome category or some forms of uh, pulmonary atresia with intact, intact ventricular septum or other forms. So given that uh, functional univentricular heart is uh, unsuitable for biventricular repair, the heart can be managed by bestly creating fontan circulation. This figure shows the spectrum of functionally, so-called functional univentricular heart. This is data from Sejong General Hospital who had a fontan operation. The one third of patients it had the so-called isomerism, 
and uh, one fourth of patients has a so-called univentricular heart, and 10 percent CCTJ tracks by trigia crisscross heart, and so on. These can be the usually uh, included in the functionally single ventricle or functionally univentricular heart. This figure shows the pattern of univentricular AV connection. So the both atrium joined to the one dominant ventricle. This connection is double inlet ventricle. And uh, another situation is that uh, there is uh, totally absence of right AV connection. There is no connection of right atrium to the ventricular mass. So left ventricle, uh, left atrium is joined to the uh, main ventricle. As long as the entire AV connection is connected to the same ventricle, this is the univentricular AV connection, other the kind of. Uh, this is the common in the ventricle. But uh, as long as the both atriums are connected to same ventricle, this is the another type of double inlet ventricle. So double inlet ventricle means that we can say double inlet ventricle exists when the greater part of both AV connection or junction it is supported by the same ventricular chamber independent of atrial, atrial ventricular valve or ventricular morphology. The greater part means, so the greater part of the both AV junction is supported by the same ventricular chamber. I will explain later. So the atrial arrangement can be four. Any type of atrial arrangement can be found in the double inner ventricle, although the usual arrangement is most frequent, more than 80%. And AV connection, as I mentioned, can be guarded by separate two AV valve or can be a common AV valve, as long as the two atriums are joined to the same ventricle, we can say these connections are double in net ventricle. And the uh, most important and feature is to differentiate the uh, morphologic feature of a dominant ventricle. And uh, around 80% of patients had dominant morphological left ventricle. So in double in the ventricle, when the dominant ventricle is left ventricular morphology, the incomplete or rudimentary morphologically right ventricle can be left or right, but always, always anterior superior aspect of the ventricular mass. If the dominant ventricle is morphologically right ventricle, another incomplete rudimentary morphologically left ventricle is always inferior posterior aspect of the ventricular mass. As you know, in the normal heart actually, left heart, left ventricle is not just the side in the left, as you know, left ventricle is uh, always posterior inferior aspect of the total ventricular mass. Right ventricle is always superior and anterior aspect of the ventricular mass. So the, the most the rare variant is the intermediate type. We can identify the morphology in this situation. This type of uh, double inner ventricle is most frequently found in the setting of uh, isomerism. So this table summarized the uh, DILV or DILV, the characteristic. In DILV, HLS ITC is usually solitus and rudimentary chamber, as I mentioned, is always anterior and superior aspect of the 
ventricular mass and act as our net chamber usually give rise to great arteries. And the relationship between the interventricular septum and cortis interventricular septum is connected to cortis in DILV. I will show the, the interventricular septum. This is cortis, you know cortis, cortis. Dr. Julia, what is cortis? <laughs> <laughs> What is cruciformis? <laughs> okay, the, as we can see, the heart uh, from the base, you know, we have two atriums and two ventricles. We can see the interatrial groove between the right atrium, left atrium, and uh, the another groove is the between right ventricle and left ventricle. And uh, another one is the atrioventricular groove between right atrium and right ventricle and between left atrium and left ventricle. Such as the crux means the cross, cordis means the heart. So cardiac cross, Th that means the just cardiac cross in the base of the heart. So. If the main ventricle is the right ventricle, the rudimentary chamber is always the inferior and posterior aspect of the ventricular mass. The interventricular septum joined always to the cross cordis. Okay, I will show next day with specimen. If the dominant ventricle is right ventricle, isomerism is frequently associated. The rudimentary chamber is uh, Posterior inferior aspect and constitutes uh, just a trabecular pouch. And uh, cruise code is, okay, okay, as I mentioned, the way connections is maybe single outlet or double outlet ventricles. So we, when you talk about uh, just like left ventricle or right ventricle, doesn't mean the sideness. LV means morphologically right ventricle. RV means morphological right ventricle. So we should identify the ventricle based on the, its uh, characteristic features. So uh, as you know, the, what is the, the most important feature of left ventricular morphology? Anyone can say? What is LV? Just the, the it doesn't mean the sinus, just the morphological characteristic feature in each ventricle. We should identify. Okay? Julia? <laughs> Oh yeah, okay. So we can identify the morphological ventricle from just the uh, various components, but uh, the most constant component indicates ventricular morphology is the trabecular pattern of apical trabecular part of each ventricle. As you know, left ventricle heads very fine, cross, crisscrossing, fine trabeculations. Whereas the morphological right ventricle has the very coarse, thick muscle bundles running in multiple directions, very ugly trabeculations. So this is the most constant feature indicating ventricular morphology. In case of AV valve, it's very difficult to identify its morphological feature in contrast to the ventricular morphology. So we cannot say in this uh, complex heart disease, just a mitral valve or trax valve, just uh, we can best describe just a right AV valve or left AV valve. So we should identify the term overriding or straddling. Overriding means the AV valve annulus 
Annulus is concomitant to the both ventricular chamber. Stradley means the tension apparatus is inserted to the contralateral ventricle. So this uh, figure shows the pattern of overriding. In this figure, RA connected to RV and LA connected to the LV. And there's no overriding, just a concordant uh, AV connection. However, in this situation, the, the trax valve is connected to RV and LV, just uh, overriding the interventricular septum. But in this case, the dominant, predominant connection it still retains in RA to RV, just uh, more than 50% of connection is connected to the RV, so just a concordance with overriding. The just the trax valve annulus overrides the interventricular septum. In this case, the overriding is more than 50% of trax valve connected to the red ventricle. So in this case, the predominant connection is RA to left ventricle, so we can say in this case, double inlet left ventricle. Just uh, like the definition of double uh, right ventricle, this is the rule of 50%. So in this case is the good example of a double inlet left ventricle, but uh, two AV valve is completely committed to the dominant left ventricle. In this case, there's no overriding, double inlet LV without overriding. So this cartoon nicely shows the straddling. Straddling means, the, as I mentioned, the tension apparatus inserted to the contralateral ventricle. So this is annulus and atrial septum and ventricular septum. The annulus is committed to this chamber, but the tension apparatus inserted to the contralateral aspect of the ventricle. So it's very important to, to identify when we do echocardiography. Uh, even in patients with a very balanced, sizable ventricle, if there is very significant major straddling or overriding, it's impossible to repair by ventricular. So it's very important to identify. Uh, this picture nicely shows the straddling this axis is the, this is the uh, amnesia septum and trabecular septum. This is the axis of the interventricular septum. As you can see, the tension apparatus like this is the inserted to the other ventricle. So we can say this valve straddle. But in this case, this is the axis of the interventricular septum. The AV valve annulus is from here too. So just uh, overriding the ventricle and the tension apparatus inserted to the other side, and we can say this AV valve overrides and also straddles as well. So this uh, cartoon shows the, nicely shows the typical morphologic feature of a double inlet ventricle. So once again, right and left atrium joined to the dominant left ventricle at the same time, so we can say double in that left ventricle. And you can see the rudimentary incomplete right ventricle anterior and left aspect of the ventricular mass and give rise to aorta. And this uh, rudimentary chamber is communicated with the left ventricle through the VSD. This uh, specimen picture is nicely show also. So double in that ventricle, rudimentary morphological right ventricle and uh, ventricular septal defect and aorta. So previously, this uh, hole was called uh, with different names, interventricular communication or blue ventricular foramen. Given that uh, we can identify, it, uh, as I mentioned, morphologically, this chamber has the f morphological feature of a right ventricle, so this, we can say, just simply ventricular septal defect. In this case, the ventricular septal defect is very small, restrictive. This can make the outflow track obstruction. 
So the, this picture nicely shows the main chamber in double in the left ventricle. As you can see, the both AV valve joined to the morphological left ventricle, and uh, we can see the rudimentary chamber from the anterior aspect of the ventricular mass. You can see this. Uh, although it is very small, rudimentary, and incomplete, but uh, we can see the apical trabecular part shows the right ventricular trabeculation pattern, very thick trabecular pattern. So we can say this chamber is just a ventricle. Previously, this chamber was just called as a, a flow chamber, but now recently, most identify this chamber as a right ventricle. So this is the VSD, this is aorta. So typical type of double in the left ventricle, the VA connection is discordant. As you know, RV to aorta, LV to pulmonary artery. So DILV, VSD, small right ventricular chamber, and VA discordance. This is the typical uh, anatomic nature of a double in the left ventricle. Uh, also, this picture shows the small rudimentary chamber. This is the left anterior morphological right ventricle. This figure shows the right anterior morphological right ventricle, so-called D-loop, ventricular loop. Got right-handed ventricular topology, as you know. Ventricular loop, yesterday, Dr. Sir has a lecture about this, but uh, what is the right hand topology? Julia? <laughs> so, uh, it's very difficult to, uh, we, and when we define the ventricular morphology, as I said, should be based on the internal characteristic feature of the morphology, but uh, we can say the ventricular loop, so-called, uh, we use the term right-handed topology. Right-handed topology means this, uh, um, actually in the normal heart, we open the RV free wall, okay? So, if the thumb indicates the tracks valve, okay? The fingers indicate the afro track, my palm, face the interventricular septum. Do you understand? The, this is the right hand topology. So that heart should be the D loop. But in case of uh, congenitally corrected TJ, so you imagine the, you open the morphologically, morphological right ventricle to open the free wall, left-sided morphological right ventricle in congenitally corrected TGA. You cannot indicate to with this right hand, okay? The tricuspid valve, interventricular septum, and afro check, you can indicate only with your left hand. So this is the case of left-handed ventricular topology, we can say. So when you talk about uh, ventricular loop, remember the so-called right hand or left-handed topology. So in this case, there is no inner part of the ventricle, but this is our flow track. This is an uh, ventricular septum. So the, this is the so-called D loop and the L loop. But uh, the most frequently we can find L loop in double in the left ventricle. So sometimes the ventricular septal defect is very small and make uh, our flow track obstruction. Sometimes we need to extend the VSD to relieve the uh, flow track obstruction. In this case, you can see the very small restrictive VSD. So it can make the uh, flow track obstruction. Sometimes uh, we need to resect uh, this interventricular septum. So at that case, we should identify the course of the specialized conduction tissues. Uh, 
So it's different between the R loop and L loop ventricle. So this is the most common type of L loop. If the R is left sided as a congenital corrective TGA, the specialized conduction tissue goes to the superior anterior aspect of the VSD, whereas the ventricle, right sided right ventricle, I mean the right handed ventricular topology, the specialized conduction tissue will go to inferior aspect of the of VSD. So when we need to resect or enlarge the VSD, this or this area is the safety zone for resection. So VA connection is usually, as I mentioned, this discordant, but very rarely the, some hearts with DILV has the VA concordance, RV2 pulmonary artery connection, so-called Holmes heart. So another uh, case of univentricular AV connection is the absence of one AV valve or connection, left or a right AV valve, as I mentioned. The atresia of AV valve can be produced by absence of AV connection or imperforate AV valve. This figure nicely shows the phenotypic features of so-called tricuspid atresia. In this case, you can see right atrium, left atrium, and uh, morphological left ventricle and small right ventricle. There is absence of AV connection. There is no connection between the RA. And instead, the uh, fiber fatty tissue interposed between the flow of the right atrium and the free wall of the ventricle. More than 95% of patients have this type of trix atresia, but very rarely some patient has the connection is biventricular, but this heart has the imperforated AV valve. The absence of left AV valve is very rare, but uh, the situation is similar to the absence of right AV valve. So this is a totally hypoplastic left heart. There is no connection between left atrium and the left ventricle, and again, imperforate the AV valve. In this case, is, uh, uh, there is no connection between left atrium and ventricle. But in this case, the morphological right atrium connected to the dominant morphological left ventricle, like in congenitally corrected TGA. So this uh, AV valve uh, should be the morphology of mitral valve in this case. but. Very rare case, the AV valve straightly and overrides the ventricle. So another form is biventricular AV connection with hyperplastic one ventricle. This uh, spectrum has a very wide spectrum of congenital heart disease. The most common situation is that uh, our flow truck obstruction combined by hyperplasia of the respective ventricles. So critical aortic stenosis or critical pulmonary stenosis with hyperplasia of left ventricle or right ventricle. So unbalanced AVSD can be included in this category of malformation, and as I mentioned, a subset of Epstein malformation. And uh, straddling or overriding AV valve may be the important obstacle to repair by ventricular so it's very important, functional univentricular heart. By ventricular AV connection, but one ventricle is too small to support independently. Systemic or pulmonary circulation is the included the broad spectrum of univentricular or functional univentricular AV, uh, univentricular heart. So another issue is that the univentricular, functional univentricular heart or functional univentricular a functional unit single ventricle associated with the so-called visceral heterotaxia or isomerism very uh, complex condition, but because of time limit, I do not talk about this in detail. So the clinical manifestation, manifestations of a uni functional univentricular heart depends on the associated conditions, the VSD size, as I mentioned in DILV, VA connection, 
and uh, fluorosteric obstruction or pulmonary arrhythmia. The common scenarios and uh, early palliative procedure in this functional univental heart can be as follows. If the, the piece is adequate, the circulation is balanced and we can wait. But uh, in case of severe pulmonary stenosis or pulmonary atresia, the main clinical manifestation would be the severe cyanosis. So we need uh, systemic to pulmonary shunt. But in some patients with no PS, the congested heart failure will be the main clinical manifestation. In the case, we need pulmonary artery band. And some patients with severe systemic obstruction will manifest, will present with uh, shock. So we need to surgery to relieve obstruction, uh, such as uh, node type or TKS procedure. So management of function unit ventricle heart is uh, as follows. So we need early palliative procedure in the neonatal period and the next. Uh, so we need to need stage operation. The second operation will be the bidirectional cover pulmonary shunt. And finally, these hearts can be managed by fontan type operation. So functional unit ventricle heart or Functionally single ventricle is the synonymous, means a group of congenital cardiac malformation in which biventricular repair is not possible and palliation with fundant type process is required. Used to be described as having single ventricle or univentricular heart, albeit uh, the most all possess two ventricular chambers with one well developed ventricle and one small or incomplete one. So for the diagnostic approach, actually, again, the sequential segmental approach is very important to define the, this complex congenital malformation. Thank you very much for your attention.